Welcome! Today we're going to look at what's inside the Spiderball SRB400 Sub Gel Blaster Box. You see everything it comes with. Now, before I open this, I just want to mention this is a Sam's Club special. So it comes with an extra 400 round magazine and 20,000 rounds of ammo. And this was a great deal at Sam's Club. I wish I'd gotten more. Uh, they don't have it in my club anymore, but maybe they'll come back soon. Let's take a, take a look at the details on here. So this says 200 feet per second, 7.4 volt battery, 5,000 shots on a single charge, 400 spider ball capacity magazine, and we have two different fire modes and a safety off, semi-auto and full auto, which is eight per second. Okay, let's take a look inside. Holy spider ball awesomeness. I'm just gonna take everything out, set it aside, and show it to you all together. So we've got the main gel blaster body in blue, we've got the strap attachment, the magazine, the USB charger, the strap, some safety glasses, 20,000 rounds of spider balls, and the extra magazine. That's it, nothing more in here. This did not come with the target that the other one I bought from Walmart comes with. The battery comes already in the blaster. To remove it, you slide the switch over and you pull up the battery cover from this end. I'm just gonna take that out, show it off here. To put the cover back on, you slide this end under here and then push this down and it snaps back in place. Here you see everything that the blaster comes with. So this is a special edition blaster. So it comes with this extra magazine and it came with these extra spider ball balls. If you're not getting the special edition from somewhere like Sam's, then you're not gonna have these in there. So we'll just set those aside and we'll look at what you get with the regular blaster setup. So this is the SRB 400 sub, it means it doesn't come with a stock. It only comes with this uh, attachment for a strap. And here you have your strap, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later. The first thing I wanna go over is how heavy this blaster feels. And I know that they add a weight in here, and it just feels really solid and heavy, especially when you put the battery in there. It feels really good. It feels, if, and it's made of good quality plastic. Here you see there's a little, maybe you should add a little screw there, but interestingly enough, they put a serial number on this side. Maybe that's a requirement in some countries. It's a nice blaster. We've, We've played around with these a lot and we really like them. The magazine just snaps in here. This magazine is a electric powered magazine. It's got contacts up here. It's got a motor in here that drives the gels up. You open this flap here to pour the gels inside and it'll hold about 400 gels. When you're done playing, you have to empty out all the gels from the magazine. It has this little slider switch on the side that's supposed to allow you to pull back this gel stopper thing here, but it doesn't do a great job. As you see, I'm pulling it back and it's more just like angling it to the side. So I find that I actually have to like, kind of stick my finger in there and pull that back, hold it back, and then I can empty the gels out, all of them that are left. Because when you're finished playing, you're still gonna have like this amount of gels in here because the drive motor's down here. So it's not gonna push this portion of the gels up. So you're gonna have to empty those out and keep them for later. Magazine clips in here, no problems there. This USB charger is a pretty standard USB charger amongst these gel blasters. I've seen it in use for several types of gel blasters. So it works with a 2S lithium ion battery, so 7.4 volt battery. This 7.4 volt battery claims to be 1800 milliamp hour. That's totally believable with these types of 18650 cells. So I have no reason to doubt that. I can do a test on it later. When you charge, you're gonna use this white connector here and plug that in like that. Then you're gonna plug this into a USB outlet. It could be on a computer, it could be on your phone charger, and you're gonna charge that. Now, I always recommend charging these in a safe location in case anything goes wrong and it catches fire. It's not gonna catch fire to the rest of your house. You wanna make sure that you're practicing proper charging safety when you charge these. Charge it in the fireproof bag or a fireproof box that's metal or something like that. This connector is for the gel blaster. So let's go ahead and put that in here. So we put this in, plug it in like that, and then put the battery in there. There's plenty of space, it's nice. There we go. Now, a lot of people wanna convert these to 11.1 volt 3S three batteries. Although you can use an 11.1 volt battery, you're going to ruin the gears faster and you're gonna burn out the motor faster. So if you wanna use an 11.1 battery, you can go ahead, 
but expect that you'll soon have to upgrade the gearbox gears, the gearbox shell itself, and probably the motor. So you're gonna have to do basically a full upgrade of the internals. But this is a nice body because this is based off of a Wells G36C blaster, which is a very common popular blaster, especially in Australia and Asia. And so it's a solid shell, it's a solid build. So there's no reason that you can't do some upgrading to the gearbox in here. And this gearbox is based off of an Airsoft V3 gearbox. So you can use V2 or V3 gears. You can use a lot of, diff a lot of the same parts as Airsoft. The main differences are gonna be that the cylinder head, the plunger, and the tappet plate are gonna be different for gel blasters because of the different size of the gel balls. These safety glasses, they're not bad. They work, they're pretty thick. Uh, I don't know if they have a ASTM rating on there. I don't see anything on the, on the lenses. We've used them before. They're adjustable. You can adjust the length. You can rotate the arms up and down. So they're good, but I would really recommend some goggles because then you're gonna get good eye protection, especially for kids, because kids um, have trouble keeping these things on sometimes. But when I say kids, they do point out this is for age 14 plus, so don't let younger children use it. But I would highly recommend some goggles or a paintball mask or some of that. One of my favorite goggles to use for gel blasters are these Revision Locust goggles, which are military issue and can be purchased as military surplus for as little as $11. And it says condition used, but really it's just most of the time it's conditioned new old stock that's been sitting around and they'll be really practically new uh, in my experience. So a lot of airsofters recommend and use these also. These are great goggles and I trust them to protect my eyes way better than any of the cheap safety glasses that come with the gel blasters. At the minimum, this is all you need is some eye protection. If you get hit in the face, it's gonna hurt and you'll be jumping around cursing a little bit. Okay, now we can attach this back strap piece that just goes on there and slides down. It's pretty stiff. This one is stiffer than some other ones. That one's stuck. This one is actually pretty stuck on there. Okay, you got it in for the back strap. Then here's your strap. The strap adjustment was kind of funky for this. So first thing you do is you put your strap through here like this and you pass the buckle through. There you go. And then this strap, you can adjust the length of it. It's meant to kind of like go over your shoulder to sling it. We had some trouble with these straps. I need to look at the instructions here. So here are the strap instructions. And it says, pull strap here to decrease opening size, pull strap here to increase opening size. Outside strap, bound strap. So the bound strap would be, this decreases the opening size, so you can make it smaller. This increases the opening size here. So you can make the strap bigger, so you can sling it over your body. You can clip it on the back here, and sling it over your body. Honestly, we just found these straps kind of annoying, and we ended up just removing them and just playing with the, the short version of it. I actually prefer this short version to, for playing over the stock, because I felt like the stock just got in the way of mobility, especially when you're crouching behind things and looking around bushes and stuff like that. This actually had much better mobility without the full stock on the back, like the orange one that I have in another video. So here we've got our selector switch. It allows us to go between the three different modes. The X is safety, nothing's gonna happen there. Here, this is semi-auto. So every trigger pull, you're gonna get one shot. And then you go to full auto, and you're just gonna pull, and it's gonna just keep going. Okay, that's it for the overview of the Spiderball Sub Blaster, the blue version. Keep an eye out for the next video where I use a chrono to do some FPS tests and do some testing in general of this. And also I'm gonna have another video where I tear this thing down and look at what's inside. And there's gonna be some more videos for how to repair these when they break. So if you wanna know what's inside this blaster and how to repair it when yours breaks, then make sure you subscribe and watch my future videos. See you soon.